The, the biggest gap that I see is our ability of autonomous driving. Where we save hardware and power um, at the cost of some software complexity. So for you and I, these are very, this is a very simple problem. This is not the case for computers. We have to teach the computer how to deal with shadows, forks in the road, or large objects, tunnels, or how to deal with construction sites. It has an opinion, and then you're saying this is the correct answer, and it tunes itself a little bit. It's almost like you have to solve the self-driving problem <laughs> to just simulate other cars. This, oops. Uh, this is supposed to be a video. We think people do not need to touch the wheel, look out of the window. Sometime, probably around, I don't know, second quarter of next year. So there's three steps to self-driving. You know, there's being feature complete, then there's being feature complete to the degree that the person in the car does not need to pay attention, and then there's being at a reliability level where we've also convinced regulators that that is true. But, but I think fundamentally regulators, in my experience, are convinced by data. We expect to be feature complete in self-driving this year. And when I say feature complete, I mean it'll work in downtown San Francisco and downtown Manhattan this year. Be like, how could it possibly be that good? That's crazy. The, the whole system, it, from a hardware standpoint, has been designed to, for, uh, to be a robo-taxi since basically October 2016. Uh, what, what actually really matters the most is any change to the system makes it, it can't adapt. Obviously, we've made a bunch of forward-looking statements, as they call it. Um, um, again, we were told that's impossible. Um, I was called a fraud and a liar, and it was not going to happen, this is all untrue, uh, and we expect to have the first operating robo-taxis next year, with no one in them, next year. And I spearheaded that effort personally. All these things, I said we'd do them, we did it. So we'd do it, we did it. We're going to do the robo-taxi thing too. I feel very confident predicting uh, autonomous robot taxis for Tesla next year. Mark my words. Uh, at a reliability level that we would consider uh, that no one needs to pay attention. Meaning you could go to sleep in your car, but next year for sure. This is not me prescribing a point of view about the world. This is me predicting what consumers will demand. Today, it's financially insane to buy anything other than a Tesla. They will be, uh, it'll be like owning a horse in three years. So buying a Model 3 is a good deal. All cars being produced have, the, have all the hardware necessary, compute and otherwise, for full self-driving. I'll say that again. All Tesla cars being produced right now have everything necessary for full self-driving. So you have expensive hardware that's worthless on the car. I suppose it could possibly be used for something besides self-driving? Yes. That's not important. Just sort of like, like, you know, there were amphibians, you know, but then pretty much the things just become like land creatures. I'm very excited for the Tesla pickup truck unveil later this year. It's going to be great. I think the, uh, you, you don't yeah. see any supply issues with no. getting the chip mass produced? No. It's insanely difficult to make a car. I don't know. It seems easy. Okay. Try it. Only criticism, and it's a fair one, and sometimes I'm not on time. <laughs> but I get it done.